everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck, and this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And this is an episode that a lot of people have been waiting for for a long, long, long time. Lots of chatter in an amazing community, kind of a cousin community to this Wine Library TV, over at CinderellaWine.com. Now Cinderella Wine, kind of like the Guilt Group, Groupon, you know, deal of the day, one product, has an amazing community over there. John R, Bernard Bob, my, you see all those guys, right? Awesome stuff. And my Pete, he's, a, he's in every community. Isn't that, he's just amazing that way, he is amazing. A great guy. And my Pete, I was just on Dr. Oz's show. I was in the building, I, should, I didn't see you. Anyway, so the genesis of this show is, unlike most episodes, not most, 99.8% of the episodes where I've not had the wines before. This is an episode of wines I have had before. But uh, but what I'm excited about is I, I had them in the head of tasting a lot of things for CinderellaWine.com. Mott, please link up CinderellaWine.com. Please have it pop up in a video right now because, uh, you know, I like that too. Um, so these are controversial wines. Uh, this is probably the single most popular wine in Cinderella wine history, the Elias Mora, that uh, got tremendous press. No uh, no rating here from K-Murf. K-Murf missed the ball on this one. Can you get me K-Murf, Because I need the ratings here and K-Murf's killing me. K-Murf killing us early. But I think I remember like 95 Spectator. Um, this is a very, very controversial somewhat wine. The Lirac, uh, Clos de Sex uh, from Alain Jaume. And uh, this is the single most controversial wine in the history of all time. K-Murph, yes. the wonderful K-Murph. Um, these two do not have ratings. This is 95 Spectator? 95 Spectator. What's this, 91, 91 Parker? 91 Parker, I believe. Right, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And so this is like the most favorite wine of all time. Seriously. This is the most insane debate of all time. Yes. People claim there's grapefruit in it. You Definitely. see that? And this is what? This what has been like the little underground favorite because I think we sold it for like 14 bucks or something. Right. And it's been I've seen some people diss on it. Uh, well, yeah, but, just like anything. But no, but I mean, this is like well, what? That's this is like eighty diss, twenty like. Right. This is like ninety-five love, right. five like. Yes. And this is like ninety like, ten diss. Yeah, you could say that. You can give me different numbers if you want. Don't have to guess me here. No, no, no. I'd say maybe ninety-five, five. Okay, so really it was, popular. It was very popular. But not more popular than this. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. The last more I was definitely takes the cake. That one had its own. I mean, this is the whole reason for the show. So, yes. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Thank you, Kimmer. Yours. Three wines. Oh, Brandon, come on in. This is just a wacky show as it is. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Yes, I'm taping. Don't be sc show show the camera on Brandon. As soon as he walks in, flip it, grab it, put it right in the There he is, Brandon. Cindy pricing. Oh, we can't do that right now. Right. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. That was pretty funny. That ties into the theme of the show, Mott. So, anyway, I'm uh. Very excited. It's a fun show. It's already started off fun. I'm in a good mood. This is why I love doing this show. I love you guys. Um, and uh, let's see what happens. So just to give you a thought, I love this wine. This wine was very interesting. I have notes from it from a million years ago. I remember liking it. I just, you know, I'll be brutally honest. The deal was so staggering that I thought uh, it was just going to be a huge home run. I do not remember it being like weird or throwing me off. Um, I thought it was going to be a very popular wine. Um, but clearly there's some stuff going on with it. We'll find out in a second. And this I thought was a complete no-brainer. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, Alain Jaume, Lirac 06 Claude de Sex. Uh, this wine is 50% Grenache, 35% Syrah, 15% Mouved. We sell it for 22 bucks, but it was on Cindy for 14.94. Now you want Parker. Big ass glass is being brought out today because this is a big, big show. We're gonna even let this air for a little bit longer than just one day because this is a big, big show. Everybody needs to consume it. Snippy snip. I mean, come on. Hundreds and hundreds of people have tasted all three of these wines, so I want to make sure these notes are on point. Because that's how we do. You know, the first thing I get across in this is a little, believe it or not, a little radish on the nose. I'm sure nobody brought that out. I like to keep that one. A lot of people use a little black pepper and spiciness coming through. Beautiful strawberry fruit. Just a gorgeous little nose. It kind of really comes across bigger than, you know, than its category. Lirac, very under the radar. A lot of people don't talk about Lirac. Kind of forgotten Rhone area. Um, but 
the AOC of Lirac delivers consistently some of the best value wines in the world, um, and based on what Kay Murph said, very popular wine, as you can tell, so I get a little kirschiness coming through. Very, it smells big, you know? Let's give it a whirl. Little black fruit, um, ooh, kind of like prune, you know, almost, you know, I could see, you know, on the Cinderella form, a lot of people love the Amarones, you know, Amarone, the wine that cannot be mentioned, ma. But I kind of see almost like that raisiny flavor profile on the back end of this wine. I can see why so many people would have liked it. Beautiful fruit, very clean, shrubbery jam, raspberry jam-like, red fruit, black fruit, has a combo of the both, so that's kind of cool. Reminds me a little bit of a, of a um, cherry fruit roll-up. Just beautiful, great tannins, dark chocolate on the back end, almost that bitter high cocoa count. Little, little hint of the alcohol on the back end, getting a little bit of that. So, you know, let's not make this a love fest. 15, I feel it, for my palate. But again, interesting little tidbit, getting into the mindset. I'm a little sensitive to it, but boy, do I know people like it. So. When I'm doing this, you know, especially when I'm buying, you know, off of Wine Library TV, I'm really thinking, you know, Wine Library TV, it's more like, hey, this is what I think, and you find that line and you evaluate the wines based off me being consistent, hopefully, and you making decisions. Here, when I buy, I really try to think about what the consumer wants. And so this little spike of alcohol on the back end bothers me a hair, makes me say, huh, um, but I know the consumers, for the most part, don't taste that as much, I'm a little more sensitive to alcohol than I, most people I've noticed, so that makes me an anomaly out of, the, out of the circle and to the consumer. I mean, this really comes across like baby Shatnaf the Pop, no question about it to me. This actually tastes better than a lot of Shatnaf the Pops that I've had in the $30, $35 range. It's a very good bottle of wine. If this was, you know, since this is, I was gonna say, if this was Wine Library TV, this is Wine Library TV. Score at 90 plus points, I think it's very, very good. 90 plus, 90, you know, right there, really, really good. Ma, can you grab that Samarco, by the way? The last wine I did for the monthly, yeah, exactly. By the way, just, you know, because we're totally just riffing. Little side note, you ever get a chance. 03, very hot vintage in Italy, the Rampola Samarco. Great producers, 92 point Galoni, 92 point Spectator wine, 77 bucks or so, was delicious. Completely just rocked my socks off. I feel we're hanging here, riffing. Might as well just do a little wine talk. So anyway, oh by the way, July 10th, a Cinderella party here at Wine Library. We're gonna get more details very shortly, but please block off that weekend now. Please get here. Big event in the store, free cheese, free wine. We're gonna tape some episodes. I'm gonna grab a crap load of you to be in that episode. And then that evening, we're gonna take it to NYC. I'm working on the details right now for a big party, bring your own bottle kind of thing. We're gonna bring a ton of stuff that's been on Cinderella and all that. Be here or be square, like the sign. Please be here if there was ever a time to come to Wine Library. This would be it. Um, you know, open house. You know, we did this a couple years ago. It was a huge success, might remember, a lot of fun. I mean, would this not be a great time for one of our favorite all-time Tampa Steve, who's made a stunning comeback in the forums to make a reappearance in the Dirty Jurors. We're gonna have a great, great night. Um, all the characters will be here, all the famous ones. You think Tim F will come? Did he already say he's out? Jamie, I saw, has a conflict. Devastating. Yeah. Uh, Tim F's just a dirty giant fan anyway. All right, let's move on. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt, I know you're a Giants fan, but I like you much more than Tim F. All right. A Cateau Latour, Lake Corrette, VDT. This wine, guys, what's about to happen over the next seven minutes may uh, pretty much uh, categorize my career. Now, this is Lot 12-A05 Mott. Let's show that. That is kind of like the vintage. That's kind of how they do it. Um, they do it by lots. Um, 05, you know, uh, that's vintage is the 05. Uh, I, there's so many different thoughts on this wine that I wonder if that has anything to do with what have you, but I don't think so. I'm very excited, this is, uh, this was in the pack, uh, the three pack, uh, during the holidays, I think. I'm gonna completely, can't remember now. 
yeah, I think it was a three pack, maybe three pack A. Um, there is some sediment coming across in the bottle, Mott, let's show that. Um, we can see that through the back end, you see it? And through the front, let's make note of that. This is 100% Syrah, um, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited about trying this. I remember um, trying to, you know, I'm looking at it because I'm trying to remember. Um, and we sell it for $48.99 by itself, which, you know, a lot of the maniacs, or no, excuse me, that's not fair, a lot of the Cinderella peeps um, said they wouldn't pay $4.88 for this mod. This is a very, contra as a matter of fact, you know what? I'm not gonna let the last wine do anything. Big rinse. I'm uh, building up to this moment because I'm darn excited. I think, uh, I think we're gonna find out some interesting things. There's a lot of different values. You know, let me let me be quite upfront with the Cinderella community. A lot of you have voiced your opinion on anger towards this wine, but a lot of you have emailed me directly saying, I don't wanna say it in there. Maybe lurkers, there's lurkers in Cinderella as well, um, that you were fans of this wine. So I'm very, very interested. And here, I'll be right back. Keeping them excited? Oh, yeah. Doesn't seem like you're keeping them, uh, I didn't say a darn word. I'm just gonna do this. I feel like I have to change. You know, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this moment. So, let's see. I know probably a lot of people are watching this show for the first time because the Cinderella crew passed this on. I know I'm being a little ADD and excited. I apologize. I'm just a happy guy. I love my family and all that. So, I'm just happy. Anyway, here we go. Sniffy sniff. Okay, the first thing I get across in a big way is that this is outrageously over the top with black pepper. There is a lot of black pepper. And so, if you are a, um, a huge fan of black pepper as I am, you probably had that apex moment where you just used it so much that it started bothering you. Have you ever gotten a headache from black pepper, Chris? No. Notice I called you Chris, because it's a serious moment now. Refer to me as Mr. Vaynerchuk. Mr. Vaynerchuk. <laughs> Mott, so I literally got headaches at times from black pepper. This smells to me like a over black peppered piece of beef jerky. So if you've had beef jerky, real made homemade beef jerky, it can get very black peppered. Do you get it? Yeah. Big, right? Yes. Bothers you? No, no. actually no. No, okay. So right at the top, a lot of beef jerky, black pepper, uh, to put it into context, it's been open for about an hour and 20 minutes. A little root, almost like a, you know, I'm just gonna hold, I'm gonna hold off and they're really, t I'm not even gonna. Yeah, I mean, this is really dominated by, you know, black pepper, uh, there's a little gaminess on as well, but just enormous amounts of beef jerky black pepper coming through. So a little subtle red fruit on the back end, almost like, um, you know, almost like cherries, meeting red peppers. So I get a little kind of like cherry red pepper thing going on. Let's give it a whirl. First things first, no question, it's pretty light. And so this is where it starts getting into an interesting debate of why so many people got emotional about this wine. It's very delicate, it almost has Burgundian-like characteristics on the mouthfeel. It's a light wine. Two things, first of all, I decided to swallow it because I want to try to be in the mindset of the Cinderella user. I do get a little hint of a, I understand this grapefruit flavor that people are referring to. I just got a little splash of it. The power suggestion is powerful, but there's no denying there is almost like a ruby red grapefruit thing here. The first thing that I can really think about with this wine is it reminds me of salted fish. Um, my Taranka, which is a fish that my parents would eat It'd be really dried fish, 
outrageously salty. You would get bread with lots of butter and like rip the fish apart and put it on top, eat it with Heineken. My parents never drank Heineken Mott. My grandma, uncles, but boy oh boy, if they had Taranka, if we got real Taranka in, in the mid 80s, Heineken's would come flying out. So this, on the way down, the biggest thing that comes across to me is fishy and salty, which is definitely, and then you start adding in this citrus vibe that the palate gets in, and you start really understanding why so many people won't like it. Now, you're talking about a flavor profile that is very near and dear to my heart. Why you're seeing this saltiness is there's an enormous amount of minerality in this wine, and over the top minerality. Probably dis, yeah, disproportionate and off balance minerality to the body weight of the actual wine. For Syrah to come across this light is very confusing to the normal palate, to like advanced palate, to any palate. Let me be bold. Is that okay? 98% of me wanted to pan this wine. I wanted to show that I'm real. You know, that I, you know, because I, you know, at the end of the day, we got four cases in the building of this. Those wines have been sold. We'll take anything back. We're, you know, we're awesome like that with our clients. We're always going to do the right thing. So there's no real win financially one way or the other for me to go any direction. Plus, if you know me at all, I think you recognize my per- my word, which then becomes my brand, is far more important to me than doing the wrong thing and jockeying, you know, and trying to sell more, save face, because I think most of you in the Cinderella and definitely in the Wine Library TV world know who I am and how I roll. And so I think this is a classic example of two things happening. One, the wine is disjointed and awkward. It may even, I don't think it comes together, I don't. But it it is off balance with its minerality, for sure. However, it's light. And this is an interesting debate. I think a lot of people are not respecting wines that are lighter. I just don't. I mean, I think they respect Burgundies, um, and they tend to be light, but Beaujolais completely get dismissed. I think there's a lot of complexities and intriguing flavor profiles that are coming through in this wine. I think people are caught off guard because of how light it is coming from a Syrah. but I don't think this is anywhere close to the awfulness that so many people have decided to jump on the bandwagon on Cindy. At the same token, for such a conservative wine critic like Antonio Galoni, 92 might be a hair high. Third, I have a very weird palate. I like things that are maybe too mineral driven like this, a little different with the rose petal. I love this little kind of um, like sour, sour, red pepper thing it's got going on. I'm enjoying this in some ways for its nerd appeal. It's definitely thought provoking. I'll be honest, I'm actually going the other way here. It's outlandish to me that people would diss this wine and say it's not worth four bucks or whatever. There were some pretty big emotions on it. I don't see that at all. I think you gotta check your palate if you think that this is straight garbage. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, this really kind of acts like a Cru Beaujolais meets a Pinot Noir meets a mineral, you know, like a, t- a bondole. It, it's got some really intriguing stuff. It's a weird wine. On Wine Library TV, I probably would have scored it 89 to 91, question mark. It's that strange, and all the controversy comes from a good point. We've done a lot of wines in this show, and very few wines have been this intriguing, but I think it's kind of interesting. I've got to admit, with all my soul, I was definitely walking in wanting at some level to dismantle this wine. That's what I hate about preconceived notions. I know some of you wanted me to do a brown paper bag. Um, I just didn't know how to really do that. So I thought this was just, you know, I could have told K-Murph to one time slip it in, but then people would have been like, did he really know? It's so hard. You know, maybe we can bring this, maybe one of you can bring the wine to the July 10th party, put in a brown paper bag, mix in with a bunch of different wines, and we'll see if, maybe we'll do a whole blind tasting at dinner that night. Maybe that's a good idea. We'll do all double blind. All of you can bring it. We'll see how many people can pick it out consistently. It's a pretty distinct taste, so I think people will. I kind of like it. I think people should give it a shot. It's different on the palate. 
There could be massive bo bottle variation. I don't know. Um, but I like the minerality. I like this wine. I like it. I'm probably being even tough on it at 89. If this was really, really wine library TV, it wouldn't stun me. Well, I don't know. Actually, you know what the funny part is? I think it has a hollow mid palate. I'm not surprised Galoni scored it 92 points because of some of its awkward flavors and, the mineral and minerality and maybe that grapefruit thing that you're tasting. I'm surprised it scored it 92 because I think the mid palate's kind of hollow. That's probably what's making me think it's an 88 to 89 point wine. That's probably where I'd put it. The more I think about it, just on that final taste, it reminded me. I got sidetracked when I was yapping before. The, you're right. I'm alright. <laughs> I'm putting you to sleep with this no. technical talk. You know, I got serious, right? No, I mean, we got in there. Um, yeah, 88 plus, 89. I, it's one of these great wines I think evolves and probably changes quite a bit over time. And let's, uh, let's definitely uh, revisit. As a matter of fact, Mott, what do you think about Nah, We'll let it go. All right. And finally, Elias Mora, Grand Mora, Toro. 14.5 alcohol, 100% Tempranillo, $60 at Wine Library right now, and was $34.98 originally on Cinderella wine. Pretty good. 95 point spectator. Big dark black. Just did this for myself more than anything else. Little sniffy sniff. A little bit of. Anybody get coconut? I wonder. Gotta look at the notes. There's probably a billion notes on Cellar Tracker. Get a little coconut in the nose. Get a lot of coconut. A, little, a lot of coconut. Getting like some raspberry flavors as well. A little oak. Big fruit. Big bold. Black. Black cherries. Coconut. Let's give it a whirl. A little big for me. I remember this now. I'm just trying to remember like where it was at. This is the kind of wine that I knew. I mean this is... Tasting today, I tasted something we'll be offering in a couple weeks. Bought it right on the spot, had this kind of profile. It was just big, bold, delicious, structured, not fake, just perfect, right? You didn't need like you didn't need implants for your ass, it just was like bad out. That's what this wine is. <laughs> anyway, big, bold, structured, dark tannic, big, bold, structured, dark tannic. It was so real, I had to repeat it twice. And really nice blueberry pie flavors on the back end. Good firm tannic structure. Finish is great, great finish. Uh, will last for 10 to 12 years easy. Put it away, relax. Might be a little over oaked for me. Really well made, really well made. Beautiful wine. Um, a little too big for my palate. I'm on Library TV, honestly, 92 plus. Not the hysteria, 95 points for spectator, or even the insane love for this wine on Cinderella wine, but I get it cold. So it allows me to understand what people like. When it's big, delicious, and not fake, structured, people are gonna love it. To me, my paddle's a little more subtle. It's why I lean towards wines with subtle nuances. You know, it's kind of like, of course I understand like a supermodel mod, right? Of course that's, but you know, I like like the chicken pock mark on the face, freckles, like a little flaw scarred even. I mean, not, not insane, I'm not like a arg, you know, but arg is a pirate, I don't know. Anyway, I like, you know, kind of nuances. I think subtleties are interesting, especially in wine. And this is just obvious, supermodel. This is like a peculiar taste. Like, you know, when your buddy's like, I'm dating some hot chick, and then you look and eh, you know, in the eye of the beholder, right Mr. Mott? Um, but this is obvious. This is a very good wine. Just a little too big for me. A little too fake. Like a fake rack. You know? Anyway. Question of the day. What is the single most controversial wine amongst you and your friends? Ooh, I like this. I like the deeper questions I can go with. What is the biggest debated wine amongst you and any of your friends? Maybe it's you and your wife, maybe it's you and your buddies, you went to Napa, everybody likes Silver Oak, you hated it. Anything interesting like that. What is the single most debated wine that you've ever been a part of? You, with a little bit of me, it's a good show. We are changing the wine world.